Welcome everyone to the Truffle Shuffle. Today I am at the Henry Ford Museum. We got the Oscar Mayer Wienermobile. This is the 1953 version. The original was made in about 1932 and it wasn't in the shape of a wiener. This is the original design of the Wienermobile at the Henry Ford. And it was a prototype for the ones you see now. This is the Dymaxium House, which is was supposed to be the house of the future after World War II. It was built, it was designed to be built by car manufacturers out of all aluminum and be able to ship out to any place you need to build it to save the housing crisis after the World Wars. And I'll take you for a walk on the inside of the Maxine house. This right here is the original coat closet design. The bedroom. With a teeny tiny toilet. Not a lot of room for the taller people. And that would be the shower way back there. It's all molded plastic. In the safe space, they made this as your culprit, as your dresser. The walls are ventilated, and rainwater to run through the walls to serve your water. Kitchen for all in one design. And this would be your living room area. Nice and spacious for what little room there is in the place. Now this would be a quick trip around the museum as it's closing in about an hour. I've been here all day but unable to really film. Here they got different types of steam powered machineries that would create energy for towns and cities. Now, a lot of this stuff is original from where they got it and they just moved it brick by brick to the facility and then they would dig into the hole where they wanted to put it and if need be they dig a very deep hole so they what they were trying to do here is give an example of every type of power source in existence all the way to the big steam power
the museum is about $25 per person for general mission. And it's a full day, so you get quite your money's worth. I got here about 10 o'clock. And it's almost 5 o'clock now. So I've been here for a good 8 hours almost. And made barely made it through the whole entire thing. And that's without even reading everything that's going on. It's just pretty much checking out every exhibit and enjoying it to the best of my ability. There are a lot of things here that work and run. And occasionally they'll have steam power exhibits where they show you how the steam powered machines work and they test them out for you. A lot of people like this. They're Motorama machines all over. They're all over the whole entire place. There's about nine of them. Now there's about, I'd say about two, maybe three main attractions to this place that really draw the people in. One being Rosa Parks bus, which she refused to move out of her seat. And then they have the car that John F. Kennedy was assassinated in. And they also have Abraham Lincoln's seat from the Ford Pewter when he was assassinated. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Right here is the seat from the Ford Theater in which John, uh, Abraham Lincoln was sitting in when he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth. I'm not sure if that's his blood on the chair or if it's just a water stain. I was not expecting to see that at all. That was one of my surprises. I kind of went into this museum blind. I knew that the John F. Kennedy car was here and I knew the Oscar Mayer Wiener Mobile was here. Now this section is all about segregation and Rosa Parks. So right here, this, the bus that Rosa Parks was on. This right here is a shovel from when Thomas Edison came to this place when they were building it. So this shovel was put in place by Thomas Edison when they decided to build this museum about the Henry Port. Coming up we have all the presidential cars that they have in their collection. This is President Reagan's car. This is probably the most famous presidential car I've most seen. This is the John F. Kennedy assassination car. Now it's been changed. Since his death, Linda B. Johnson and Gerald R. Ford also made changes to it, including the bulletproof glass and the bulletproof roof. Right there in that seat is where John F. Kennedy was assassinated. There's special footholes for the Secret Service and hand grips in the back.
And then you come in here, they have a diner car inside the restaurant. Inside the museum that you can eat at. They have a very basic menu for the table. Quite a fun place. You can even get some shakes there. And coffees. Look at this old school McDonald's sign with all the lights. Now going through here they have a whole bunch of different types of cars. As you expect at a Henry Ford Museum, they also have a bunch of prototype cars. Old military cars. Yeah, like I said, there's a Mustang concept car. This car right here supposedly gets 100 miles per gallon. They even have a Daytona 500 winning car. Denny or not Denny Hamlin. Trevor Baines. Daytona 500 car. You can start the confetti on it. Now there's a couple of new exhibits coming in the future. They, uh, in March, there will be a Marvel exhibit with a whole bunch of Marvel stuff from the movies. And they're going to have a Racing in America exhibit of all about car racing. Look at that. we got a super old race car. Well, most of it's made out of wood. 1906 locomobile. Look at that. All wood interior. I even go as far as have an old Holiday Inn hotel room. Like they took it brick for brick. Even down to the trash can. Look at these neon lights. Let's see if you come over here, you can actually see the interior of the bathroom. They even put a trash bag in the trash can to make it look really good. That shag carpeting. Alright, now coming up here is probably what I thought was the most exciting and surprising thing I saw. I literally when saw this when we first stepped into the museum. And I got teary-eyed. And I don't really know why, but I was very emotional to see this. So let me surprise you with it here in just a second. Look at the size of that train. This thing is huge. Like, let's see here, put it in perspective. This is. It's quite big. It is a 1941 locomotive. This thing is huge. I can't even fit it all on camera. How big this thing is.
And I thought this stream was quite interesting too. It actually had old stagecoaches used as a train cars. From 1831. inside the cab of this locomotive. And this locomotive is known as Rocket. Now, the first time we saw a train like this, we didn't believe it actually existed. We saw it in Thomas the Train when we... And so actually... Eighteen twenty five nine Stevenson rocket train. It's all steam. All right, now we can go upstairs inside the cab of the train. Like, to give you a good perspective of how tall the train is, this is how high up it. President locomotive. Sorry, there's one else to see. Called the Sam Hill. This was a wood burning train. This is that wood. Mm -hmm. This is nice. There's like two sets of trains here. Full size cabs, full size train, everything. Got a very nice passenger car. Now, this was used to clear the snow off the Canadian Pacific Rail Line. They drive down the rails and pile the snow. And they have a locomotive right behind it. Man. These things are huge. Like this is a 1909 Baldwin drag consolidation train. And it's just crazy how big these are. It's another 154 specimen. Can't go any further because they're remodeling. There's like another maybe conductor car right there, and a passenger car right here that you can't really see inside. That might be a dining car right here. Is a baggage car they actually used to carry the baggage in for the customer. It's the Detroit and Mackinac baggage car. They got me all nicely set up with. Bag is jarry in there with even some Louis Vuitton. Here's the caboose for the Detroit line as well. So 1925 caboose.
This is streetcar from Fort Collins Railway. There's right down the bottom is a lane speed car. They did race at the salt flats. There's more of the other passenger car. Use it. They even have sets of mile trains for you. Different size scales and shit. Kind of cool they have a camera set up on one of the front of the trains as it drives down the car so you see it from its perspective. Right here they have the very first concept of a General Motors 2016 self-driving vehicle. We got lots of cameras all over it so as to try to avoid getting accidents and be able to drive without anyone actually steering. I believe a couple of these did actually get in accidents. But, yeah, it's bound to happen when you're trying new things. That old stagecoach. From 1891. These old train cars would be pulled by horses up and down streets. Kind of like what they still use in Disney World. And the old saddle horse buggy. Out in this section, they got some history of air pump bike. It's a 1928 Ford 4ATB trim of the motor. And a 1927 Boeing 40B2. Now you can take guided tours all around this whole entire museum. For an additional cost and if you're looking for more information about that you can go to the henryfordmuseum.com and you'll be able to tell all the prices here's a replica of the wright brothers first flight and they have a 1939 vault Skorowski VS-300A prototype helicopter. This is actually a national engineering landmark. They also have the Detroit News helicopter, which is awfully weird as it has plane wings, helicopter rotors, and plane engine. How exactly does that fly? And this is a French airplane. It didn't make it too far. But it did fly across the channel. Now in this part they talk about the circus aspect of flying. They had wing walkers and other 
electric flying. They even have a circus tent where you can pretend you're a wing walker. Flying on a wing. They take you right from takeoff to being in flight. is the Bakker Josephine Four Bird Arctic Expedition Plane that they're not sure if it ever made it to the North Pole but it said that they made it all the way to the North Pole on an expedition Thank you for joining me at the Ford Museum, the Henry Ford Museum to be exact. And so if you like my video, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment in the below. And I hope to see you at my next video. Goodbye.